Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at how you can edit character assets via your SVG editor. Thanks to Vector Graphics, it's super easy to replace elements of your character's body and accessories, as well as modify the shapes and curves. Cartoon Animator 5 provides full Vector Graphics support, so you can continue to use these features in the future. When you enter into the SVG Color Adjustment Editor, you'll find that there are default color groups that you can use to make color changes for any character element. To learn how to customize these groups, please check out our dedicated tutorial. Let's take a look at how you can edit your character with your SVG Editor using the original group structure. You can find thousands of paid and free SVG resources, including clothing from various online marketplaces such as Envato, where I got these items from. Before we get started, you'll want to define your preferred SVG editor in the Vector section of your preferences. You'll find a list of supported software here, and in this case we're using Adobe Illustrator, which currently has the best level of support for this pipeline. To get started, we need to go into Composer mode, and then click on the button to launch your SVG editor. That will launch the entire character structure into said editor, which consists of one layer for the skeleton, and another for the sprites. In this scenario, we're only going to edit the RL image layer. The first step is to copy and paste the complete clothing item into your project. In this case, I'm bringing over the sweater. Since we're going to be animating it with the arms and torso separate, we need to then proceed to cut the arms into separate elements so they can be animated independently later in Cartoon Animator. You can use closing path and anchor editing to make this process a bit quicker and more accurate. Once you're finished, you can simply duplicate the arm to the other side by using the Duplicate and Reflect. The next important step is to replace the original arm layer with the newly imported arm image. In this case, we need to replace the images in the L arm, hip, and R arm layers. What you want to do is click and drag your new images into those layer groups. You don't need to worry about the naming of your image, as long as it's in the proper layer group. Be aware that if it is the top image in that group, then it will then be assigned as the default sprite later on in Cartoon Animator. In certain cases, you may also need to make slight adjustments to the clothing elements like I'm doing with the neck of the sweater here, so it looks like the character is actually wearing it. Once we have all of the image elements in their proper groups and in proper order, then we can move on to the pants. Again, you will need to separate your pants into two separate leg images and be sure to round out the top of the legs to ensure that the animated results don't look jagged. I'm also changing the color of the hip element to match the legs. Be aware that in the current workflow, detailed things like pockets can cause some tricky results, so for now you'll want to keep things simple. This is just a quick summary of the workflow. For a more detailed explanation of customizing these elements in your SVG editor, please check out our dedicated tutorials. You can also quickly adjust the shape of your character's face via curve editing as well. And add elements like additions to your character's hairstyle, being sure of course to put in the proper layer group in the proper order. Accessories like the hoop earrings I'm creating also have their own dedicated position in the L ear and R ear layer groups. Again, for more details on customizing your own elements and layer order, please check out our dedicated tutorial. Once you're done adding and editing your clothing and accessory layers, you can save the project and it will update automatically in Cartoon Animator's Composer mode. You can select Preview and move around the bones to see the results of how they drive the movement of your new clothing. If we enter into the Spring Editor, we can see that the previously defined spring bones for the hair are still intact. However, our newly added rear element won't bounce around like the other parts because it has yet to be assigned spring bones. So finally, let's quickly look at how we can add some simple spring bones to the rear hair element. In the bone editor, we can add bones to the existing structure on the hair. Naturally, be sure to first have the bone you want as your root bone selected before you add additional bones. You can also move existing bones around like I'm doing for those already defined for the back part of the hair. Once your bones are added, you want to make sure that you then enter into the spring editor, and with the hair group selected, proceed to select the root bone of the spring hierarchy you want to define, and select assign to group. 
This will assign that bone branch to the hair group and keep things organized. Once that's all set up, you can return to stage mode and apply animations to see the result. Naturally, clothing colors can also be easily customized using the SVG Color Adjustment tool, which we talk about in more detail in the dedicated tutorial. That's it for this summary video though. Please remember to check out our Reillusion Courses page, and I'll see you in the next video.